Today we're making tomato trellises. So if you know me, I'm always trying to make things easier in the garden and more efficient. And one area I'd really like to improve on is our method of trellising tomatoes. Now we use a method called single stemming. That's where we take the tomato plant, we basically prune it down to a single main growth leader. That means we take all the suckers off, all the side growth, and we basically have just a single stem that we then trellis up usually a furring strip. That's just a piece of wood, it's usually one inch by two inches, and they're pretty inexpensive. But that method has, it's served me well, but it's also failed me in some critical moments where I think this method that I'm gonna show you guys won't fail me as easily. This method I'm gonna show you is definitely a really promising method. Now I will say that when I trialed it, I only used it on one tomato plant and it was a cherry tomato plant. So it's not gonna be the same as a beef steak and I'm definitely planning on kind of expanding on this idea, but I wanted to show you this because what I saw with that trial with the cherry tomato was very promising. Now the areas that this method I'm gonna show you really exceeded in, it was where the furring strip kind of failed the most and that was in structural rigidity. So I found that one big major flaw using furring strips is that while they are very reliable and they are very affordable, they can sometimes have a critical flaw in them that you don't see until it happens. And that's knots in the wood. Because they're only one inch wide, that knot can run through the whole length of the wood. And what I found is oftentimes all it took was a strong wind for all the weight on that tomato plant to start swaying. And what happens is that creates a fulcrum point a fulcrum point is basically a point where it can pivot, and it basically creased, crimped, and fell. And I ended up with an entire half of my tomato plant laying on the ground, and that was devastating to me, and certainly a flaw that I didn't see coming with the furring strip. Now another thing that really failed me was the height of the furring strips. You can, in some rare cases, find eight to 10 foot tall furring strips, but you have to remember, you're also putting that down into the soil in order to support it. And you're hoping that the weight of the tomato plant pushing down supports it enough, but you're still losing some of your length of your stake in the ground. So what was eight feet is now maybe six and a half feet. And so you're ultimately losing a lot of your trellis space because of the limiting size of what furring strips can come in. What I really love about this PVC design I'm gonna show you is that PVC can come in super long lengths. Also, you'll notice, there's no knots that run through this, meaning there's no places where it's really gonna break or fail. Now it can bend, and we'll get to that in a little bit, but because of the fact that it's wobbly, might actually play into our benefit, I'll explain. So this piece of PVC that I'm using here is one inch in diameter. You can go one and a quarter or even more than that, and you're obviously gonna end up with something even more rigid, but I do find that it becomes a little cost prohibitive the, you know, the, the larger the diameter you go, and so this 10 foot section here only cost me $9 from our hardware store. It's a pretty inexpensive trellis for something that's gonna stand the test of time and I can use it year after year as well as hold up to the weight of the tomatoes that we're growing. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a drill bit. This is a half inch drill bit and you can use whatever material you've got on hand that's roughly a half inch in diameter. I've got some of these, these are just scrap pieces of uh, just metal piping you could use PVC. Just remember that this is a half inch drill bit. If you get half inch PVC, you're gonna need a bigger drill bit because that's the inside diameter, not the outside diameter. So, but you could use PVC. You could also use wooden dowels. Does not matter. Heck, you could use metal, you know, metal rods. It doesn't matter to me. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna create ladder rungs along the length of this PVC. Oh, hello. All right, so we had to bore it out a little bit more because the uh, material that we're using, these pipes are a little wider than half inch. So we did get it though. And we're just gonna stick these in here, just like that, nice and snug. That's not going anywhere. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to drill a, another hole, but perpendicular. So this way, now we're gonna go down about a foot. All right, now that we've got the second little kind of rung in here, we're gonna go down about another foot and you guessed it, we're gonna rotate it again so that we're not going parallel, we're going perpendicular. We're creating these kind of steps that the tomato plant is going to be able to trellis on. All right, so I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna drill 
three more holes here, all equidistant apart. So I'm gonna have six spots here. They're gonna have ladder rungs all along here and I'll get back with you when I'm done. All right, we are done. So check this out. Now this absolutely looks amazing. Now granted it does look a little bit more like a medieval weapon than a tomato trellis, but this is gonna be awesome because what this is gonna happen is this is gonna stick in the ground and we're gonna actually bury this into the ground about almost two feet. This is gonna give us all this amazing length up here. We did actually cut it down to, to size a little bit because otherwise we'd be hitting the lights for this example. You don't have to if you don't want to though. But what's awesome about this too is the fact that this is really, really sturdy. You'd think because it's made out of PVC that it'd be really wobbly. It does have a little wobble in it, but you'll notice that that's actually gonna be key because what happens when a tomato plant is in the wind, the reason why you lose a lot of fruit is because the, the, the tomatoes are on a structure that's really rigid. And so ultimately the tomatoes, the weight of the tomatoes has nowhere to go. Whereas this has this slight amount, slightest amount of wiggle to where if the wind were to blow, right? You're, you're not gonna, the wind's not gonna shake the trellis in the middle like this, right? The wind is gonna move it slowly. But if you have enough weight, it's gonna have slight amount of bend that's going to allow the tomato plant to sway. And because we actually varied up the rungs, what this is gonna allow us to do is to actually, here's the crazy thing. It's gonna allow us to take the tomato plant and we're gonna go up one side and around the other. And we're gonna tie it to this rung. We're still gonna tie it just like we would normally. But now there's more weight here than there is here. So you have even more gravity pushing down on the stake, making sure that it's even more secure and all the weight of the plant is not on this smooth surface because that's the final way. That's the final way that on occasion with heavy yields, the furring strips would fail us. We would get tons of fruit and over time that would start to slowly slide down. And you'd notice the stem kind of starting to snake its way down as the tomato plant got heavier. And by the end of the season, it, the tomato plants that were, or the tomatoes, I should say, that were here are now here. And they're close to ground level where things like mice or squirrels could get at them. And so this is a wonderful opportunity for us to then basically snake this around here using these supports as actual supports, right? Nice rungs for that tomato plant to hang on and it allows us to have a really rigid structure. So I am absolutely pumped about this. I think this is a phenomenal concept. And like I said, I've never seen it done before. Did it one time with a cherry tomato, mind you, and it worked out, it, it worked out better than I was expecting. It far exceeded my expectations. Final thing I would say is the fact that because this is so lightweight, I mean, <laughs> this whole thing might only weigh maybe like, I don't know, three pounds. I mean, it's, it's very lightweight. So super happy with how this turned out and I'm really excited to make a whole lot more of these. Now, I will say, if you enjoyed this and you've tried this method before, I've never seen it done. So if you tried it, let me know. I, don't, I wanna know how it works for you. I would love more people to try this. I think this could be a game changer for tomato trellising. And I'm not always trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm not trying to, you know, I, if the mousetrap works, it works, you know, but Every once in a while, my brain goes, hey, you know, maybe there is a better way. Maybe there is a slightly better way to improve on an idea that was already really good, but make it just that much better. Let me know what you think. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. And make sure to share this video with a friend if you think they'd enjoy it as well. I appreciate it. So until next episode, we'll catch you all later. Grow bigger. Bye.